Lead Time is a weekly dose of leadership insights and interviews from Tim Allman and Jake Bessling. Lead Time is for any leader living in a busy world, looking to be inspired, equipped, and empowered to lead others to their fullest potential. This is Lead Time. Welcome to Lead Time. Tim Allman here with Jake Bessling, and you are a leader, whether you're a husband or father, wife, mother, whatever your vocation is, as you make the choice to grow, eternities are changed. Today, we have two of the most sacrificial, servant-hearted, entrepreneurial, husband and wife teaming yes. couple, passionate followers of Jesus, La Mesa connected uh, 2.0, dreaming big dreams to expand the kingdom of God couple that I have just about ever had the privilege of coming alongside. So Jeff, you were on lead time. If you wanna go back to season one, maybe three, four years, I don't know how long we've been doing this. Has it been twice, once? No, it's one time. Yeah, one time, so once Jeff, too. Jeff's story was there, but today we're going to be talking about your story together as a couple, being business owners, as well as your story talking about uh, La Mesa dreaming new dreams uh, to expand the kingdom of God. So, And today is his birthday. Happy birthday. We're not going to do the whole thing. <laughs> Jeff, we Thanks. love you. So I remember when you, Michelle, came into my office and you sat down and you basically said something like this. This was within a couple months of coming to Christ Greenfield. There has to be more to following Jesus, this whole church thing, <laughs> than simply coming on Sundays. Uh, can you invite me into more? And I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, uh, but here's what I basically did. Jake! Jake! <laughs> I hear a voice I, in the yeah. spirit. <laughs> I got one on the hook, Jake! Come help me reel them in because we, these people are ready to go. And that was right when we were launching La Mesa and you both have been intimately connected to the growth of that story. So what was your first uh, remembrances of the Nedris? I heard the voice. <laughs> and then went from my office into the, the inner office and just the hallway. And I remember just standing there and, and you were like, yeah, I'm ready to, to do something. I was like, I don't totally know what that is going to look like. But we are praying and reading the Gospels together and going into the community to kind of just do research on Friday mornings at Starbucks at 9 a.m., and you both showed up. And quickly after that, when we said, okay, I think we're supposed to do something with the homeless and we need some flyers made. And I, and I literally, as a leader at that point, I was like, how are, we don't have funding. How are we gonna get flyers made? <laughs> are they gonna be legit? Are they gonna just be me writing on a scratch paper 80 times? You guys like, we own a, we're starting a business. We can print those up. Um, and it just really shocked me already as a, a young church planter for this um, La Mesa, God's gonna provide all of our needs. And so you were a gift uh, provided by God to us. And a majority of the people I think from that initial team have stuck around, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, your leadership has grown like crazy there. So that's our remembrance of the story. Michelle, <laughs> fill in any gaps. Did we get it roughly right? Pretty good. Um, my story, my side's kind of a little inter a little bit more interesting. Sure, tell us more. Um, so I remember when you first started, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, Jeff. I was like, his faith like just oozes out of him. I've never seen anything like it. I was like, I want that. Like, how does he have that? Yeah. And so Jeff was like, well, make an appointment to meet him. And I was like, no way, I can't do that. He goes, yes, you can. He goes, that's why they're there. Just make an appointment. I was like, I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. So I did. I made the appointment. Mm -hmm came and met you, and um, one of the funniest things about that meeting that I totally am so embarrassed by, we sat down to talk, and the first thing you said to me was you were like, so tell me your story, Michelle, and I start bawling, like bawling, and I don't even know why. I'm like trying to talk, and I just remember crying, and I'm oh. thinking, Tim's probably like, why is she, what's with this girl? No, it was no, crazy, no. it was so embarrassing, no. but anyway. Um, and then um, you said to me, you said, you know, Michelle, the closest I feel to God is when I'm serving others. And you said, let me introduce you to Jake. Mm, yeah. It's and beautiful. then our lives were it's forever beautiful. changed. So. Ever changed. Mm. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking it in. Uh, it's so <laughs> good. And I, I, I'm honestly, as you're telling that story, I'm like, yeah, I, rem I remember you crying, but it wasn't a cry of, it was just a cry of, Passion. I wanted to just sit in that for a minute. I think we we have to become more vulnerable, okay with with crying. I just this week 
I've cried a couple times. You were <laughs> you were there. So I just lost it in hearing the the story of you weren't even there, Jake. Hearing the story of La Mesa and now these big dreams to that we're gonna hear about today. I just absolutely lost it at the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God through his uh, through his people. So Jeff, tell us a little bit of uh, how you were led to serve at La Mesa and what this journey over the last seven plus years is, has meant to you. Uh, it's been, after you guys met with Michelle and she came home and told me that, you know, we talked about uh, going to do that. And I'd done some stuff with the homeless before and uh, loved it and said, all right, I'm up for it. And mm-hmm. so we, off we went. Uh, and like, she, like you said, Jake, we did uh, Starbucks on Friday mornings, just reading the book, When Helping Hurts, going through that stuff. Uh, and then once we got to, once we actually launched in what, September of 2014, uh, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know if everybody was going to show up. We just mm-hmm. kind of trusted how that was going to go. Uh, and we loved it. Um, and you know, we've been there ever since. And it, it hurts our heart to have to miss a week. So mm-hmm. we tried never to. Uh, we just, mm-hmm. we wow. loved it. Uh, and all the folks at La Mesa, like I mentioned, Jake, a lot of folks have stuck with it. Uh, and, you know, you guys have been great about empowering us to raise up leaders at La Mesa and do all that. And uh, we've had some great servant leaders we do now today uh, that just do all that stuff. And it's been great. So as, you know, one of the biggest joys I get at La Mesa is when we get volunteers who just want to take on more. We're like, hey, there you go. You know, just like you guys did with <laughs> us, um, you know, drop us and send us. Uh, we do the same thing. So oh, there's so it's much there, the so much there. The disciple multiplication, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. longevity, the faithfulness, the mm. the different seasons of a ministry like that already. Um, not knowing who's going to come. Uh, I remember too, just to recall, Jeff went with me and Leslie. You know, Tim would you know different people show up, but every Tuesday, not knowing what this ministry is going to look like, to a homeless shelter called Saint Vincent de Paul, and just sat with people. And sometimes we would sit and not talk to anyone. Because it was just like listening what people are talking about, not wanting to come in, act like we're we're the boss of anything. And um, we met incredible people like Doc, mm-hmm. and he started telling us we made a homeless dictionary of of just <laughs> words and phrases that people use, um, uh, like a black and white, which was a, a like a popo. It was a cop, you know, and it was <laughs> and, a, and a snipe, a snipe, <laughs> which was <laughs> the homeless will take all of the tobacco of these of the butts of cigarettes and then put them together for for one cigarette. Um, and so, just I will always remember that time. Um, sometimes even more exciting than what La Mesa became, honestly, where it was like the unknown, yeah. the spirit. Yeah, I don't sure. know what this is gonna look like, but I know it's supposed to be right here, right now, listening and 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 wondering. Who all will will come to Jesus, and many have. And I think a great example about that, Jake, is we went to them in their spot. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't hey trying to drag them to church because that's what they didn't want to do, uh, and just listening, um, building those relationships. And then after a while, they trusted us, uh-huh. and they're like, oh, okay, these guys are in it for the long term because they called you know folks that would just drop in, drop a message, and leave. They called them drive-bys. Yeah. And hey, you guys aren't drive-bys, and you know like the dictionaries that we didn't know what that was until they explained it to us. Mm. So it was great building those relationships and then it kind of carried into La Mesa. And one day, I mean, you move from listener to then starting to talk about Jesus there and invite to, to what we then knew as La Mesa. And he had a shirt on that was Quicksilver, Quicksilver shirt. And one day he started talking about Jesus and someone's like, oh, that's cool, man. You, you Quicksilver pastor. Quicksilver pastor, and we're gonna now let lead into to That's more funny. of that. Who'd so, have known the homeless guy was the first one to see prophecy of that? <laughs> yeah, we have been at La Mesa, and, and frankly, I've been connected to the table in Colorado, and and care for, and not just care for, but learning from. We talk about La Mesa. This is a worship and meal on a Tuesday night. The table in Colorado on a Thursday night where there is mutuality, there is care, there's no hierarchy. We enter in as, as mutually needing relationship with God and then with one another. But this is a big step for a lot of Jesus followers. Anytime we get outside of our own sociology, the people that look like us, think like us, make frankly the same amount of money-ish that we make, human beings by nature, and I think it's a product of the fall, wanna be around those that are exactly the same. Like La Mesa is not the same. So what words of advice would you give to encourage those who are uncomfortable going into diverse ministry settings? Um, I would say just do it. Um, Mm -hmm. Honestly, we when we decided to do La Mesa, that first day, 
we, I, I was scared to death. I was like, <laughs> I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to say to these people. Um, and we had really planned for it. And we, we really thought we were prepared. We, you know, did, we took classes, we read books, we mm. met every week, we, we went in the neighborhood ahead of time. Anyway, so, uh. and, and it just, it wasn't anything that I thought it would be. And it's been the most amazing experience of our lives, honestly, so is just it. being there and doing yeah. it. Absolutely. The, the first, one of the first yeah, people I sat totally. with at St. Vincent, I said, hey, do you mind if I sit here? First thing he said, as long as you don't talk to me. And I'm like, okay, great. You know, just gotta, this is going well. Just gotta, yeah, <laughs> just got to kind of roll with it. Uh, yeah, one of the same guys, I mean, Doc, it was like, it was like, what do I talk about? It's like, when I'm a pastor. So, hey, I'm a pastor of my church. He's like, I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist. Cool, tell me about atheism. You know, tell me about your story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you guys do that well. I mean, just the advice of, treating people like you'd want to be treated. Jesus said something about that. Love your neighbor, you know, as you love yourself, as you'd want to be treated. And so it's just like, hey, what, how's your day? What's going on? Here's my day. And when we let fear, you know, how are they going to think? I don't know if I'm going to When we let fear dominate our hearts, this is sin. Because who are we doubting? The Holy Spirit that lives within us, who's going to give us, I love Jesus' words, do not be afraid when you go into the courts, into places of possible persecution. Like, this is not persecution. No one's dying when we're going to La Mesa. I mean, this right. is in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and like safety being, this is not an unsafe environment. Coming, It's just different. So don't worry about the words that you're going to say. The Holy Spirit is going to give you the words at the right time. And frankly, it's not about words. It's just about listening and loving and, and yeah. getting to know stories. And, and we right? become way more uncomfortable than than that, that other person does. They're actually like, yeah, let's talk or not or move on or what's going on here. Let's eat, you know, let, let's just do life and be normal, you know, so that's awesome. Um, La Mesa's been going on for eight years in September, 2021. Uh, what's La Mesa 2.0 look like? You guys are on that leadership team for La Mesa. Um, what's, and then what's your next learning journey, Jeff? Uh, so La Mesa 2.0 is, uh, we've loved what we've done in Mesa with La Mesa. Uh, our goal is to replicate that in other places. Probably first stop is Tempe. Uh, so we're calling, you know, La Mesa Tempe would be the next uh, area. Tempe and, Table. Yeah, Tempe Table. And I would, you know, I'm super excited about that because, you know, now that we went through the, the pain and the learning experience, you know, I think we learned some great lessons. We learned how to love well and figure, you know, like you said, it's not the words. It's, you know, just loving the people and the relationships with the people. And that's what's really made people uh, you know, engage with us and then, you know, be receptive to hearing the word and learn more about Jesus where normally they wouldn't. Uh, so I can't wait to get started. Yeah, exactly. You know, we kind of put it on pause because of COVID yeah. uh, when we were, you know, trying to far, find a partner church like we're doing with First Christian in Mesa. Uh, so looking forward to, you know, getting that going again. And, and you'll have a launch team yep. of folks that are, have been trained, discipled, and then and then sent, right? Yeah, we've, uh, you know, we've raised up so many great leaders. There's already some that have stepped up, say, hey, when we go to Tempe, I'm in. Uh, so, you know, we'll go do that, you know, on a different day. We're thinking maybe Thursday, so we'll, we'll figure it out, uh, and it'll be great. So for, uh, for, for me, um, boy, I really, when we first started at La Mesa seven years ago, you know, like I said, my first interaction with one of the people was, yeah, just don't talk to me. I'm like, okay, great. And then we started, uh, boy, the more we went on this journey and all the different things we tried, raising up leaders, uh, just all these different things, uh, I didn't know that I was being groomed for something else. Uh, you know, when you're in it, you kind of don't know. Uh, so then uh, it started with, uh, uh, with you know, you guys have been great for, for us. Um, you've been super awesome spiritual mentors. Love you. So, uh, you know, Jake, I think it was years ago when you had, you know, casually said, hey, you know, as we're doing this, maybe you could be a spiritual leader at Blue Mesa. I'm like, yeah, sure, okay, maybe. <laughs> Just kind of, you know, you planted that. I didn't, you know, think much of it. Uh, you know, Tim met with you a couple of times about it too. You're know, like, hey, you know, you really like to do the relationship thing. Have you ever considered this? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I'm like, Jesus like, all right, I'm like, you know, we're not done with you. Uh, and then you send in Vicar Thomas, unknowingly. God sends in Vicar Thomas. Uh, he says, hey, you know, we're going to be a little light. Would you mind doing one of the messages of La Mesa? You know, it's just a one-time thing and all that. And I should have known better Never believe that. Yeah, it's a one-time thing. And I'm like, oh, sure, I could do that. So I do that. The and then before you thing. know it, I'm in the rotation. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> that was great. Let's do it. Here's the bullpen. Follow it. Yeah, there we go. Exactly. So, uh, 
it's been great. You know, it's just you know another step on my you know journey. You know, getting a little uncomfortable and doing that stuff. It's been awesome. And you're starting into the Kairos project, connected to Unite Leadership Collective, the certification kind of kind of journey there. Kairos, just front end on that. Super, super yep. excited. So you can go to uniteleadership.org, click on certification, and then there's a shepherd, evangelist, or executive director. We were kicking around because of your skill set in the business thing. You could choose executive director, but nah, you're a proclaimer of the word. So you're going into the MDiv program out of out of uh, Kairos. Yes, I am. Uh, yes. If you'd asked me seven, eight years ago, or even <laughs> six months ago, if that was even on my radar, I would have said, heck no. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You know, that's <laughs> that incredible. Kind of my thing. And you know, wow. it's just been great. I've had you know so many great people around me, like you guys. We've had so many people, the leaders at La Mesa. I mean, just you know, you never know <laughs> how Jesus is going to shape you and, and drop stuff in there to get you ready for that. My entrepreneur background too, like you said, you know, those new starts. It's been dude, unreal. It's crazy. So you don't know Jeff. If you're in the Phoenix Valley and want to come to La Mesa on any given Tuesday around six o'clock. Inside right now, you will find about 30 people yeah, so in a circle, and Jeff is holding court. <laughs> like, it is a rah-rah, here we go, this value is what we're serving, missions. here's our values. And he'll bring, like, a spontaneous, connected to a value, connected to the word, word of encouragement in two, three minutes, and the, the palpable Spirit, Holy Spirit is there, it's so, so good. And I'm thinking, like, this last Tuesday— why in the world are we doing this at the Gilbert campus? Like this energy, like it's so, so powerful. I am failing on Sunday mornings uh, to what Let Jeff is Jeff doing. Let teach you in Shepherd. Maybe, I, I do. No, you are. Seriously. You get really practically though for leaders, like yeah, what what do you do right before and, and what's your um, focus there? With right before with when the I leaders. when I do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we always try to. It's a it's an opportunity for us to just get reset, um, just to make sure that hey, you remember why we're here? Because sometimes you know we don't want to be transactional. You know we're serving food and stuff, but that's not what we're doing here. That's not why we're here. Uh, so we try to keep it brief, a couple of minutes. Um, I always you know try to pick a, one of the core values that we have for La Mesa, uh, like you mentioned. Try to find you know um, I think through like a scripture. The rest I just kind of wing it. You know, I mean, I'll walk in and I'm, it's, it's Holy Spirit inspired with the exception of knowing which core value I'm going to talk about. Okay. And then a scripture is tied to it. Uh, maybe I have a story. Maybe I don't. Maybe it comes to me when I'm walking in there. Maybe stuff just flows out of me. Um, and it's, it's been great. I mean, yeah. just the reception, you know, yeah. when we first started doing that, I was like, well, I wonder how this is going over. And people are like, this is great. I feel I'm ready to go. And then I, I take a deep breath. And then I can go serve more with love versus making it a transaction. It's awesome. Yeah. It's the talk before you go to battle. Yeah. You know, it's the William yeah. Wallace pumping up the troops, you know. I mean, it's a spiritual warfare night. Mm -hmm. And what matters, what matters most. And and as a preacher too, it's similar, you know, and this is for any Christian. Like if you have to talk about if you're when you're invited to talk about Jesus, you're thinking like, this is my value. I'm gonna look for opportunities to see those stories. You know, so we have a text of scripture. This is for you as a shepherd too. And then for a week or a month, you're like, how does that uh, Luke chapter 15 passage at the prodigal son or whatever, like, where do I see that in action? And God's always gonna give you exactly. what you need uh -huh. when you need it. So the big step for you as a follower of Jesus as you're discipling up and coming mm -hmm. Holy Spirit filled leaders like uh, Jeff and Michelle is they're moving from responsibility like, oh, I'm gonna show up and do this. Can I say yes to this? Yes, I can. I've got, I've got margin, I can say yes uh, to this. From responsibility to use my gifts uh, to then spirit-driven ministry, spirit-relied relied, uh, upon ministry. That's what you're doing as you enter in. And these people, the Nedries are in your church right now, I can guarantee it. And call over to a buddy and say, hey, let's move them into, move them into ministry. So let's pivot now and talk about your business because it really, your the entirety of your journey is kingdom inspired ministry. But you've got a business; you're making a living and providing a service to our surrounding community. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about that journey as a husband and wife team, business yeah, owners. Kick us off. Um, <clears throat> Tell us your story of the, your business right now, and you guys kind of working together. What is that? Because I, mean, I remember about eight years ago. Yeah. You were transitioning out of a work, the American yep. Express. Yep. Yeah. And going into La Mesa too, but then you also on the side almost for a couple of years had been printing cards, and it was like mm -hmm. in your garage. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. tell us the inception of this business. Well, so what's it called? Uh, Viking Printing. Viking Printing. Um, Minnesota Vikings yeah. fan. There you right? go. Our office is all That's purple, um, but um, but we uh, started 
a printing business and I started it. I was in that industry and left it. Oh, okay. Jeff said, let's let's continue it on our own. And we said, great. And he's always been an entrepreneur. And so he loved that idea. So he kind of helped me and set up the business. And I was doing it at home. He was working corporate America. Right. And his plan was when we get it to a certain point, which he thought was comfortable for us to you know, provide for our family, he would leave. Hmm. Well, uh, it's hard to, to make that step. And he kind of got pushed in that direction. Some right. things happened at the company and he prayed about it and he had some choices to go one way or the other. And he's like, I'm just leaving. We're going all in. We're going to go all in. This is the opportunity to do it. So he he was given that opportunity. I think we met with you and talked to you about it. I'm trying to remember. Anyway. Just prayed over like. Yeah, prayed about it. Whoa, this is going to be a big leap of faith. And so he jumped in and we've been doing it ever since for what, 11 years? Uh, 10 years. Or 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. So. So what's it meant as far as your marriage? I mean, if you're open to sharing a little bit of the dynamics of being a husband and wife team, um, is that always rainbows and butterflies? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it definitely can be challenging. Uh, you know, we, first thing we did when we were going to work together like mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. we sat down and had a good conversation about it and said, look, you know, we, this is our dream to do a business, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be at the expense of our marriage. Right. So no matter what, uh, we, that's always been in the forefront. So, you know, there's always been friction. Uh, we're very different business wise, which is good in business. If we're about the same, it would be tough, but you know, it causes friction to you. So, uh, you know, we just, it's important for us to leave some of that stuff at the shop when we leave yep. and not bring it home with us. How do you differentiate responsibilities based on your gifting in the business? Um, we just naturally did, really. I mean, Jeff, Jeff is the leader. He's definitely in charge, and, I like, and I'm happy with that because he's the entrepreneur, and he's had, had those skills. <laughs> what is your role? So I do sales. I do sales. I do uh, some of the accounting, um, and I love sales, so... Yeah. And I love, you know, more strategic I stuff. I love the people. So, hey, yeah. where are we going to go? How are we going to get there kind of stuff? So I like looking out here, and then she loves to, she's great with people, which yeah. is, you know, we're in the people business. So you've taken some big risk over, I mean, just that initial, like, we're going all in. What are some other risks you've taken, and what advice would you give for, for people taking that risk? Uh, it's definitely a big risk. Uh, you know, you try to prepare as much as you can, you know, with whatever planning and preparation you can do. Uh, but at some point, uh, just like we said about La Mesa, you just got to go do it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, there's no perfect time to try to start a business. There's no perfect time to do this stuff. Uh, if you don't, if, if you don't take, I know so many people that talk about all these great ideas and here's what I should do and could do, and they should all over themselves. And they don't know. <laughs> I love that, I love that <laughs> phrase. I love he just said phrase. it so nonchalantly. I know. He did, he did. I was like, what did he say? Uh, I know, me too. Should I'll all be the first person I saw it coming. I saw the shit coming. <laughs> I'll be the first person to get censored on lead time. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, and say it again. They should all over themselves. I should. Yeah, they should. Yeah. And then they don't do anything. Awesome. So if you don't go and just leap, take the leap, oh. you know, nothing happens. Oh, okay, I'm going to go off on this right now. If you're struggling with launching whatever it is the Holy Spirit has placed in your heart, and you've got all this, and you say, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. i got to wait until everything's kind of figured out. You want to hear the brutal, honest truth. This is a word of law for you. It's not that you're a perfectionist. You're a coward. Can I say that? Yeah. Sure. You're a coward. Put on your big boy and girl pants. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, gather a team of people around you that want to dream and help bring the, the dream to fruition. And then just launch and go on the adventure. Is it going to be risky? Who, who knows how it's going to turn out? Like, find the peace of Jesus here. And then train your brain to say, this is going to be epically awesome, and I'm trusting in you, Jesus. We need more courageous Christians and fewer cowards. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of <laughs> no, That's good. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. No cowards here. Yeah. No. Cowards <laughs> no. Here. Um, do you have any? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it a lot. I don't know. Any, anything about your journey that you're like, man, I would just like to share this with leaders? Because you're both leaders. You've led. Uh, it's all spiritual. It's all kingdom-minded. But any other advice for, for leaders out there? I think it goes with what you just said. Uh, you know, you may not think that you can do something. Yeah. Uh, try it anyways. You know, I mean, every growth, every significant growth step I've had in my life uh, has been because I was uncomfortable. I got put in a situation that maybe I didn't think I was ready for. And, you know, somebody saw it, whether it's a homeless guy seeing it first or you guys saying, hey, you know, we see you doing this. Um, there's just so many there's so many people that'll be there for you. Like when we do some of that stuff at La Mesa, uh, boy, if we fall down, everybody's right there to help you out. You know, like when I was helping with communion, I forgot one of the four questions we like to do. And Thomas is, 
it's the spirit. It's the spirit. And I'm like, what? And it was like, oh yeah, that's right. You know, just trying to help out. And I think everybody's great that way. There's there's forgiveness there. Like I said, nobody's perfect. Uh, and you know, I would rather try ten things and maybe fail at one, but get nine done, yeah. than sit around waiting to have the perfect thing happen for that. Yeah. And I think, boy, I really see a lot of people. Their hesitancy to just take some action is what hurts them the most. That's what I see a lot. Yeah. How about you? Any advice for leaders? Things that you've learned over the years as you led? You know, fear. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. I think fear is huge. I So many people will talk to me just about I, La Mesa. And they're like, well, I could never be around homeless people. They've got this fear that it's dangerous or scary or whatever. And I think that fear just really keeps a lot of people from taking that next step and yeah. just trust in God and know that he will be with you and guide you. And you just got to let go of the fear. Yeah, that's beautiful. And undergirding this outward appearance of Jesus and faith and um, risk acceptance for the power of God and what he wants to do in your life, I know is spiritual, physical, mental, emotional rhythms behind it. So just what is one of your favorite body, mind, soul, spirit, like rhythm, daily rhythm or weekly habit that you do that you're like, I am killing that. I couldn't live without it. Um, a Bible devotional, um, a workout, on the drive, you're listening to something. What's a good rhythm in your life that you like? Uh, for me, as soon as I open my eyes, I start mm. thinking about what I'm grateful for. Great. Uh, before I even step out of bed. And then in case I forget that step, I have it taped on the inside of my mirror. So ah. when I start shaving stuff like that, I'm like, oh yeah, what am I grateful for today? Beautiful. What happened yesterday that I'm um, excited about? What do I want to get done today? And then, uh, you know, we have a little bit of a commute. So 30 minutes while I'm driving into the shop, uh, I'm going through the Word. So I can put it on audio. And then I only do it if I can pay attention, because otherwise you start thinking about this. And it also helps mellow me in traffic, <laughs> which is a good thing. So uh, that's how I start. What do you listen to these days? What uh, I'm going through, um, I forgot which plan, but it's a read the Bible in a year plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm trying to read in six months. Um, oh, just wow. because I, it, it's really been, um, boy, it really starts me off right when I get to the shop to do our stuff. Uh, so right now I'm in, you know, well, it starts all over the place. I'm in Jeremiah. Great. Uh, and um, New Testament-wise, I'm in John. Mm-hmm. Which, and you're getting you know, 30 minutes a day. Oh, get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, six mm-hmm. months worth. Yeah, so it's been, it's been great. Love starting with gratitude as well. That's and I'm going to yeah. do that on the inside of my mirror where I take out my shaver. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah. never achieve, I mean, your face is so delightfully shaven. <laughs> So yeah. I can't, I can't yeah. grow it like you can. No, so. no, dude. I have no problem in a You're doing a great ways. job. <laughs> other, other habits and rhythms, Michelle, that help you? Um, for me, I'm on third year of doing the Bible in a year. So wow. we started and we did this year together. Mm-hmm. And he's doing it double time, but I'm doing it just daily. And I listen to it in the morning when I walk. Mm, so I walk cool. my dog, but nice. it's just the first thing. Like, it's so funny. I, I tell myself I can't call a friend. I can't listen to the podcast I want to listen to until I do that. Cause I feel like it really just sets the day and it sets, it's, it's really just sets your whole day. It just reminds you. It's wonderful. Uh, kind of on the same line of, uh, you guys are both learners you know, leaders are learners and readers and listeners. I know you listen to Lead Time as well. <laughs> um, but what is a book that you're reading right now that you really enjoy besides the Bible? Um, I'm reading Atomic Habits. Mm-hmm. And, nice. um, it's classic. Yeah. It's great. I'm listening to it, and then he had it, so I'm also reading it as well. So I love it. One takeaway from them so far? Um, the one thing is when there's something you don't really like to do, you have to make it desirable to do it. Mm-hmm. So. The one thing I do real quick is I've been walking yep, and yep. every morning and I have a certain book that I listen to after I do my reading that I will only do when I'm walking because, and I look forward to it. Like I look forward to listening to that specific book while I'm walking and I won't do it any other time. It's so great. yeah. Lovely. Makes it fun. Uh, I'm reading like four different books now because of all the <laughs> classes I'm in and some of the stuff I'm doing. New book, uh, new book, new yeah, book. The one, yeah, the, but I always try to do one on my own too. So uh, I'm reading The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Yeah. Uh, I think I've read it before, yeah. but it's always a good refresh. Probably been you know at least 10 years or so. Uh, and uh, I always get, I love to read and, and I get I always get a couple little snippets out of everything. One snippet from there? Great. From the Infinite Game. From uh, you know what? It's, it really is applicable to all areas of my life, business, personal, and uh, ministry stuff. And it's, you know, you really got to know what you're playing for. So it's not um, it's not these wins and losses. It's a bigger picture type thing. Right. Uh, you know, like they say, the infinite game. And I love how it's not 
uh, it's not those tiny little things that matter. So good. So to close, you're going on this shepherding journey. Tell us, in your own words, your favorite story of Jesus. Bring us into your favorite story of Jesus. Uh, for me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michelle? It can be anyone. Yeah. It can be anyone. Like, tell us, tell us a story. I really want to be Jesus. inspired by a Jesus story. There's... So, not Easter. Yeah, yeah. No, there's so many. That is amazing, Easter. Can't, can't pull the resurrection one? Okay. Uh, you know, for me, uh, one of my favorites is um, the woman with the blood discharge. Mm. And what, the, what I love about that story is Jesus wasn't planning on healing her. Yeah. Okay? She, you know, I, I picture it, you know, she snuck up behind him, yeah. grabbed, his, grabbed his robe, he felt the power go out of him, she's like, poof, I'm healed. And it was great. And yeah, I love that because it wasn't, you know, a lot of times you see Jesus, you know, he comes to you and performs that miracle. And it was her faith that um, led that. And he told her that, yeah. you know, and I love how um, he, that, you know, she didn't, he didn't look for her. <laughs> she sought him out and just the, I mean, he didn't even have to speak a word. Right. He didn't have to do anything. Just touch him and she was healed. Yeah. And I love that story. So it's wonderful. One. How about you? Um, mine is um, John chapter 8, uh, the woman, the adulteress, actually, that uh, the Pharisees bring to Jesus and say, you know, <laughs> by the law, we should stone her to death. And he kneels down in the sand and says, he without sin casts the first stone. And mm. when he comes back up, they're gone and nobody's done it. And uh, he says to her, uh, I won't do it either. And yeah. your sins are forgiven. Yeah. So. Man. No more. Wow. Yeah, I love it. This has been powerful, awesome. You're gonna wanna listen to this one again. You're gonna wanna put it into practice and, and really ask and invite the Holy Spirit into your daily rhythms, into how he's wired you, the gifts he's given you. This is what we see in um, Jeff and Michelle. Um, and then use that to contribute to God's mission. You don't have to be a church worker, but you can be a church worker in the real world with your gifts, leading new things so that you would be a, a loving Christian follower of Jesus caring for people through printing even. And if we can serve you, yes, through printing, if we can serve you in any way to help you go on a multiplying of disciple journey to raise up Nedry families, uh, please uh, look us up at uniteleadership.org, uniteleadership.org. And if you have any printing needs in your local, talk to these guys. <laughs> you go to the Viking, Viking printing. Jesus, back to you, yeah. Jesus is so good. It's a good day. Go make it a great day as you follow after him and eternities are changed as you make the choice every single morning yes. to grow. Uh, thanks for Join us, Nedries. You guys are the bomb. That was awesome. You have been listening to Lead Time with Tim and Jake. You can subscribe on your favorite platform where you listen to podcasts or by visiting ChristGreenfield.church forward slash CGTV. Thanks for listening. Tune in next Friday for another episode of Lead Time.